Okay, so picking up where we left off for Community Ecology Part 2, this is talking about the different types of interactions that we see, right? So we talked about the um, interactive hypothesis, the, this idea that all of these species within a community are interacting and they need each other, and there are different types of interactions. We have two big buckets. Um, it can be direct or indirect. And then we break it down into um, some uh, more specific types of interactions. Um, basically, we can see that there are um, interference, which is directly fighting over resources, exploitative, which is indirectly competing by consuming a common limited resource, like space, apparent indirectly between two species, both preying upon the same uh, predator or being preyed upon by the same predator. Um, there's all these different ways that we see either direct or indirect um, competition, right? And competition is always about resources and survival. We have this principle that basically governs interactions. And if we remember, direct is always going to be, we are sharing the same resource. Indirect might be, um, they are both being preyed upon by something or they're consuming another resource that we both need, right? But they're not directly feeding on the same thing. The um, competitive exclusion principle, or also known as Gauss's law, basically states that two species competing for the same resource can't coexist if other ecological factors are constant. It's a principle because very rarely are ecological factors totally constant all the time. But what we see is that if a species has the slightest advantage over the other in the long term, they're going to emerge the more victorious uh, species. Either the loser will relocate or become extinct. And this idea is that complete competitors cannot coexist. If I'm sharing the same resources, um, someone is always going to get the leg up or become more fit to survive. Um, this has to do with space. The closer in uh, space I am, or the closer in location I am to a, com um, a competing species, the more likely one is going to dominate over the other. We see this with two different bacteria species. In separate cultures, they can survive um, in the same sort of growth curve, whereas we see in a combined culture, one takes over after about six days. There are solutions to competitive exclusion besides either going extinct or leaving. Um, what we see here is called resource partitioning. Uh, resource partitioning is basically either multiple different species or a single species consuming slightly different food and usable resources in different ways. If we look at this image, um, this is probably an example of sympatric um, of speciation where they started as one species and eventually became multiple different species. Or it could also be an example of different species that eventually uh, change to fit their niche. We see that light and water are obviously important resources for these plants, and they've made it so that the shorter ones uh, probably don't need as much anymore, whereas the taller plants uh, get a lot of those resources, and they've adapted to um, use the resources that they need. Um, other oops, other examples of competitive exclusion uh, of solu of solutions to um, competition is the idea of character displacement. Um, species that are very similar tend to start diverging and becoming less similar. Um, we just see this over evolution. Basically, natural selection takes its course, and so this species may not um, the losing species may not go extinct or leave they will just start dying off and the species that can survive on the other resource will continue to uh, to um, to breed and pass on their genetics. When we think about competition and who survives and who doesn't, we need to think about this idea of, of ecological succession. Essentially what happens is um, when an environment starts over, um, there's a big fire, there is many species that are wiped out, 
there are certain species that are going to show up first and going to be the ones that most readily survive. Um, ecological succession is essentially the transition in species composition over ecological time. This happens whether or not there is some sort of ecological disaster like a fire or a flood, right? Um, the species that live in my backyard over millions of years have certainly changed. Um, same with any other area, but it is more likely to be very evident if there is a very large event um, that kills off the, um, the organisms. If that's the case, so let's say hypothetically all of the species are gone, uh, we see first our primary succession. This begins in lifeless areas, no soil, maybe volcanic activity or a retreated glacier, but there is nothing. Um, the first things we see showing up are bacteria, lichen, and algae. Um, if there is soil, so um, there was a community before the disaster, um, that is going to be secondary succession, which is basically we do have soil, we have water, um, and we see, see things starting to grow out of that. Obviously, that is a lot quicker than um, our primary succession. Um, organisms that can survive in very um, severe environments are going to be the first organisms or the pioneer organisms. Eventually, we reach what we call a climax community, which is a very stable community. Um, but we see ecological succession within a climax community, too. Um, there's always fluctuations, and therefore the species need to respond to those fluctuations as well. One of the biggest influencing factors on a community and on our larger ecosystem are humans. Um, right? The abiotic and biotic factors make up whether or not an environment is sustainable for other organisms, and we, as a human population, make our ecosystem not very sustainable for other organisms. We are pretty much the widest, the uh, most widespread agents of disturbance. Essentially what that means is that we change our environment the most and make it less hospitable for other organisms. Um, we reduce diversity. We prevent naturally occurring disturbances as well. Um, we also see pollution, logging, flooding, all of the things that we do to change the ecosystem in some way impact uh, the community. One of the big ones that we see is the combustion of fossil fuels. This leads to acid rain, changes in the pH of aquatic bodies of water. Uh, we also see the soil chemistry changing, the air chemistry changing. All of these things uh, influence different species. And as we know that these, because of the interactive hypothesis, we literally, there's no species that we cannot impact. We talked about this a little bit, the idea that one of the things that we impact is the temperature. And if we go all the way back, we remember temperature, water. These are the two things that determine if an environment is livable for a certain species. It determines what kind of species show up, what kind of populations form, what kind of community there is. And therefore, we are influencing, through the greenhouse effect, one of the most uh, integral parts of what makes an environment an environment for a certain number of species. Um, the idea behind this is that um, we are producing a lot of CO2. Um, it ends up in the atmosphere because of burning fossil fuels. Um, CO2 essentially traps the heat, keeping the earth very warm, um, and we're slowly increasing the temperature across the globe. We're also seeing um, less predictable seasons. So this is the end of your uh, community ecology slides. We have two more in this unit and then you will be tested on this material.